Hi, my name is Brian Wood. I'm a web developer and I create a lot of different kinds of learning content for people to be able to learn that type of stuff. And I actually have Travis Nielsen here who is from Google. And yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, I work at Google on search and then I uh, work hard to teach people what I'm learning lately through videos like this or podcasts or speaking. Nice. So we, we have a lot of things that we go through as a UX designer, uh, creating our, our process, our content, our thing, creating personas, gathering research, but there definitely are best practices that we could follow. Absolutely. Right? So do you have any best practices, let's say, for researching? Do some. Okay. Like that's number one, like do some research. And, and it's funny because this can be something that could be tempting to gloss over. I mean, because you're not producing the slick thing that you can show to your investor or your client. You're like, you're like understanding things, you're learning. And how, and how do you how do you work that into a budget? <laughs> oh, it's a line item, learning. But the, but the truth is like, do some research, do it. Figure it out, right? It's, it seems like it'd be easy to gloss over. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing you can do is test risky ideas and crazy ideas as early as possible. And this is that's interesting because that, it, does that mean that we're trying to like save time later? Yeah, save time, now? save money. Sa it's just risk, you know. Okay. Like we want to mitigate that risk by trying things early. Okay. Um, another one is just to to when you're doing your research to make sure you're not leaned so heavily on on quantitative data or qualitative data, but you have a balance between the two. Describe those two to me. Yeah, if you don't mind. good question. <laughs> so qualitative data is like I found out that people don't like this or they feel this way about it. That's the quality. Another quantitative data is that when I change this thing to blue, nobody tapped on it. That's the that's the quantitative. That's the quantity, right? Exactly. So you have to balance those two things. What do you get business-wise, and how do people feel about it? Okay. And then the last thing, you know, the best way to do research, the best practices, is to partner, collaborate with a researcher. They're going to be better than you for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do like the fact that you say if possible because there are some of us out there that might be mm -hmm. freelancers and we're kind of a one-stop shop and that type yeah. of thing. Right? Yeah. So we do what we can. Yeah. Right? Products come in all shapes and sizes. If you need to, do your own research. If possible, partner. So let's talk a little bit about best practices for some of the tools that we might actually use. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, really understanding that all UX tools are communication tools is going to take you a long, a long way. And that, that way you can start to, to balance for proficiency and perfection. It, it, it's not about being uh, the best designer. It's about using the right tool to get the job done as quickly as possible. Like some of the tools we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And a flexible designer every day will be better than, than a person who gets it perfect, but it takes them forever. And then what about being faster proficient or speed, I guess? <laughs> yeah. Is that one of the that's that's one of the things that I always look for in a tool is is how fast can this help me to get the thing done? Hmm. Um, I'll take a paper napkin sketch over an HTML prototype any day as long as it gets the thing done. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about best practices for being able to test a prototype or whatever it is that we happen to have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's kind of counterintuitive, but we want to we want to test in order to disprove our ideas because we want to save time and money. We're not trying to spend it on like wild, crazy things. So test those early and often like we talked about and, and, and ideally to disprove your idea so you can move on to the next thing that does work. Because we're, when we're prototyping, we're not usually to code yet. Which right. can take yeah. the time and the effort and energy, right? Yeah. I got that. Okay. Right? Like okay. low 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 process. Low, yep. Get that high answer early yep. on. And the other thing is, is to like look for the unexplained and, and and surprising things. Like during research and prototyping and stuff, something will happen and then the best the the best uh, follow on is not to say like, oh, this didn't happen, but to say, why didn't this happen? Mm. So so try to explain, try to be involved in that testing and and then finally go for like the low hanging fruit. What's meant by that is like the easy tweaks that you can make to make the largest improvements in the experience. That's called the low hanging fruit. You just pull it off the branch and eat it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So having best practices for the research, yeah. for the you know, the tools that we use and for the user testing is is pretty phenomenal. It's something that's when I help think us. about the, the idea of best practices, it really comes out through practice. So so we can talk about this stuff all, all day long and, mm -hmm. and make these really helpful videos. But getting your hands dirty and, and practicing will teach you these things through experience and it will become second nature. Makes sense.